sports, and we'll get to see a battle for conference superiority. Buckle up. There's football coming your way under the lights on Monday night. On the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Justin Tucker ready to go here. This is going to be a ton of fun. Ravens and Bucks. Here we go from Tampa. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. And the Bucks getting ready to go on offense for the first time. And it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer at his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. A first carry for Rashad White. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing. And they got it out to him on the left side. And he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Mayfield looks to throw. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Second and ten. Throwing Mayfield. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. To throw Mayfield. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Justin Matabike working his way to the quarterback that time. And Matabike was a madman for the Ravens a season ago. He more than doubled his sack output from the previous year and was selected to the Pro Bowl for the first time in his career. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Deontay Hardy back deep. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. 
There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. So here's the first drive for the Ravens, and at the helm is the 2023 NFL Most Valuable Player. Second such time he's won the award, Lamar Jackson. And he's coming off a season where he showed everyone that he was worth every single penny he was given. He now has two MVP trophies on his resume and was on the verge of adding a Lamar Hunt trophy to go with it. Unfortunately, things didn't work out in his favor, but make no mistake about it. He's truly one of the most electrifying players in the NFL. As long as he's the man under center, they'll always be in championship conversation. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Second and six, just inside the 30. In motion, Aguilar. He's going to handle it on the touch pass. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Here's Jackson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. A first down carry for Henry. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Coming in to put a lick on it was Levante David. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. Second down, they go again with Henry. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. What do they have for this? Third and 11. They go play action with Jackson. This throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. And now a decision here on the opening drive. Fourth and very short this part of the field. What do you think they do, CD? I think you go for it. I think there's a lot of game left to be played. I like the advantage that they're trying to create here early. I say be aggressive and try and get it done. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. Here's Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. As they've got it as we resume action. 
first down. Here's White. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Mayfield. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. They'll send a receiver in motion left. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. In motion goes the tight end. Mayfield on play action. That's taken in by Palmer. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. From the 43, it's second and three. The tight end in motion right. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game, second and eight. Going to the air again with Mayfield. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play. And now that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Now Mayfield. Right back to Chris Godwin. So no gain on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's Jake Camarda now. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Flowers going to go in motion right. Right. 
So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Jackson now. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And they work this out past the 25. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Here's Jackson to throw. That's going deep for Bateman. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jamel Dean. And the Buccaneers will take over here at their own 14-yard line. Well, that one was in the air for an agonizingly long time. Uh, just begging to be picked off, wasn't it? It's one thing if you're throwing a ball like that, trying to throw someone open or lead them into an area. But that ball needed to be thrown with a lot more conviction. As a result, it's an easy interception. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. They begin the drive on the ground. It's White. And he stopped immediately there. Getting in there for the tackle, Marcus Williams. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play... How about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. Godwin with a nice grab there, and he's been a consistent weapon for this Buccaneers offense, although a bit unheralded. He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark for each of his last three seasons, and his ability to make plays on all three levels is invaluable for not just his franchise, but his quarterback, Baker Mayfield. From the gun, Mayfield. Looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So the completion good for seven there, and that's going to bring up second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. He's been the forgotten man in this first half, not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because at all. those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way down to the 9. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 41 yards. Not really any offense for them to speak of here in this first half. Maybe that's what they needed, that big play. Yeah, and it seems that maybe everything changes right there. They've been a little slow out of the gate. We've seen that, but that one big play, that could spark a big burst right here. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Mayfield to throw it. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Baker Mayfield, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs post the first points of the ballgame as they take the lead here in this second quarter. 
Nothing like understanding where your escape patches are as a quarterback. Here he's looking, but he knows he doesn't want to force anything. So when nothing avails itself, he slips past the rushers, takes it right up the middle, and takes it into the end zone. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. That time, a six-play drive and a nine-yard run on the end of it. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And just shutting him off there. And he returns this to the 22. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half with his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half. We'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. In motion, Aguilar. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now Jackson, looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Henry. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. In motion, Aguilar. Now it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw again is Jackson. That's complete. It's Zay Flowers with it. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. To throw is Jackson. A little short one there, caught by Likely. And he's taken down inside the 30. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now it's Jackson. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And Jackson throwing once more over the middle complete. It's Flowers. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it. So on comes the field goal unit. Tucker's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Final play of the half, Mayfield. He's got Otten. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half out of the former Heisman Trophy winner, Baker Mayfield. He's got the lone touchdown of the game on a touchdown run. We'll see if he can get it going through the air as this one goes on. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Ravens set to receive the football trailing here as we resume action in the third quarter. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Jackson. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Here's Jackson. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield down the left sideline and he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown Mark Andrews 61 yards and the Ravens come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter when they drew that up I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. 
Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 10-7. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Mayfield now. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They begin with Henry. get this to the 32 in the first half he was held in check on the ground but despite that lack of production they still have the lead yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that if they could actually get production from their lead horse that would help open up this offense and widen this margin too now second and eight at the 32 yard line flowers going to go in motion right they snap it at one now it's jackson a check down here for Henry. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That'll give him eight that time. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. They keep it with Henry on first down. And yeah, that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. 
Uh, he lost six there on the first down play. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Tough spot looking at second and 16 here after the big loss. And that flag accepted. A quick pass out to Aguilar. They'll give him four yards there. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. And they'll accept that penalty. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. And they'll let that play, the completed pass, stand as they decline the penalty. So do you get the sense they like their defense? Yeah, they wanted that next down to come up. Yeah, they weren't worried about the yardage there at all. Just what you said, let the downs trickle away. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So out come the Bucs now. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. You know they wanted, you know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. It must have been a heck of a halftime speech. Yeah, maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. Mayfield. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. First target, first catch, and a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. So offense moving a little too slow there, could not get set, and they get the penalty. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Throwing, Mayfield. Here's a quick pass, he's got Chris Godwin. 
So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll be second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They go with White on the counter, and they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Godwin, the motion man. To throw, Mayfield. A quick throw there is incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. Big third down, a field goal from this spot, 57 yards as they hope to move it a little closer. Now Mayfield, and yeah, that is incomplete. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And now here come the Ravens. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. In motion right is Aguilar. From the gun, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. In motion, Aguilar. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Throwing is Jackson. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. 
Inside handoff, Henry. He'll get this to about the 38. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. Henry again on second down. And some room to roam now. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Great time there to come up with his longest run of the night. We just saw it. Leads to a lot of satisfaction because if they're able to hang on and win this game, you know what else will happen in the locker room after this? What's that? Head coaches step up and go, great job, guys. Because of that, come in a little bit later tomorrow. So a penalty that can frustrate a coach so much, a mental error, and it'll back him up five yards. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Jackson now. That one into the hands of Flowers. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now Jackson. He completes it to Henry. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down and 12. Well, if you're going to turn things around in a game like this, Charles, those are the kind of plays that you need. And I just love the way that defense rallied to the football on that one. They got the completion, but he was smothered behind the line of scrimmage, and when you make tackles like that, your whole defense is going to be fired up. Really nice play getting to the ball. Shakes off the sack. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. And this one is no good. He missed it. And that will keep this a three-point game. Maybe an important fourth quarter miss as this stays a three-point game. Yeah, now overtime is very much in the equation here. Just what you mentioned, a three-point game. They get a drive, put it through the post. We could have some free football, couldn't we? And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, they didn't fall behind any further thanks to that missed field goal, but still staring at this fourth quarter deficit. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Mayfield looks to throw. This is caught by Evans. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. Oh, big-time credit. What a play design there. They wanted to get him loose in the open field, and they succeeded. He had all sorts of room to operate in, and they finally track him down inside the five-yard line. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. Here's first and goal. They come up on a first and goal with this game still hanging in. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Trey Palmer, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter.
So the big play to kick off the drive set him up first and goal, and they're able to cash in right away on play number two. I think I'm starting to understand more and more when we get ready to do games and we meet with coaches, why they talk about big plays, explosive plays, and how it sets them up for success, because that's exactly how they're able to score on this one. We saw the touchdown. We saw the payoff. But, of course, that big, long chunk play is what got them in position. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays. The long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 14-10, a minute 53 remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Jackson connecting with Aguilar. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Throwing. Jackson connecting with Andrews. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Well, this crowd into it now. Third and two. Here's Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Ravens first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Plenty of time, and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. That is caught. Bateman fighting through, and he's got space. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Here's first and ten. Jackson to throw. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. That's caught. It's Flowers. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Well, I guess at the very least, they got the tackle from keeping him out of the end zone. Yeah, you're looking for that silver lining, aren't you? But guess what? Everything changes now after that big play. They've got a chance to strike. Now first and goal. Jackson. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game.
The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here's Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive. The bottom line, they're a play away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. Here we go. The noise deafening. Fourth and goal. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. Flush to his right. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, they were looking for a clutch play there on fourth. Unable to come up with it. How about that defense, though, huh? How about that D? Yeah, momentum fourth. swing. And, you know, I remember playing how much fourth downs were emphasized. You know, because, as you said, it's a momentum play. It's also a big test for you. You know, if people are going to go for it on fourth down, they believe you're not up to the challenge. You want to show them differently. And he is going to be stopped here at the line of scrimmage, and time is going to expire in this football game. So time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.